Hey folks, this is Kyle Wilkinson with Ellensburg Angler. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Fly Tying Series. On this episode, we will be tying the Gold Lightning Bug. This is a nymph pattern. And it's a really great general attractor uh, nymph pattern that we'll fish all summer here on the Yakima. It's one of my favorites. Um, I usually fish this as a trailer behind a larger nymph um, and then under an indicator. It can imitate a wide variety of insects. It could be a PMD, could be a blue wing, could be a caddis, could be any kind of mayfly, any kind of small insect that we have here on the Yakima. Uh, I'm tying this one today on a size 14, but you can tie it uh, even smaller, 16s, 18s, and 20s. I wouldn't go much bigger, but it's just a really great, general, bright, flashy attractor pattern. Again, it's one of my favorites. On today, I'm going to be tying it on a size 14 straight nymph hook. I've already smashed the bar, put it in the vise, and I have a gold bead on there to match. Now, since I'm going to fish this almost strictly as a trailer pattern behind a larger nymph, I want my fly to have a little bit of weight to help keep it down, but I don't want to have it so heavy that it's sinking just as fast um, as my large nymph. That'll cause problems during your fishing. So I want that little bit of brass on there to add weight, but I don't want too much. Today I'll be using black ADOT Unithread for the thread on this fly. And I'm gonna start wrapping right behind the bead. And work my way towards the back of the hook. Could go ahead and trim off my tag end here. I'm gonna keep working back into the bend of the hook. I'm gonna go ahead and take my gold ultra wire and I'm going to tie this in so it's going out the back of the hook. On previous episodes I've mentioned how I want to keep that uh, the top of my ultra wire inside my bead. I'm going to do the exact same thing today and I don't want to tie it in here by the tip because it's going to make this back end too bulky and it's going to make it way easier for my tinsel to slide out as I'm wrapping it back forward. So I'm going to go ahead and shove that ultra wire into the bead I'm gonna wrap all the way forward, making sure that everything is captured inside the top end of the bead there, and making sure it's captured all the way down to give it a nice even body. So it looks something about like that. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and take some gold flashaboo. I'm gonna tie that going straight out the back of the hook the same way. This one piece of flashaboo will last several flies, but you wanna make sure you cut the whole piece because it gives you better leverage when you're wrapping this um, forward towards the front of the hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and lay it up against the entire hook, capture it in, that way I'm not getting too much of a large bump down here at the tail. I'm just gonna make sure I have a nice even thread body capturing everything down, and I'm gonna wrap all the way up here to the bead, and I'm gonna throw in a couple whip finish to hold everything in place. I'm gonna use the rotating feature on my vise. I'm going to grab my flashaboo and rotate my vise, and I'm just gonna be making sure that every time I rotate the vise, I am moving my flashaboo forward up the hook, back towards the front. Now, if I do miss a spot, I will go back at, and uh, go over this, the entire body of the fly again with this flash of boo. Well, you can see I missed a few spots back there in the back. That's okay. When I get up here, I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna capture this one more time and do another whip finish, cause that way it doesn't come unraveled if I drop it again. Now I'm gonna work my way back. Getting it towards the bend of the hook here, kind of covering up those places that I missed. There we go. I'm gonna rotate it back forward. Pretty evenly covered, doesn't have to be perfect. Again, fish don't care if your fly is perfect. Only fishermen really care if they're perfect. So now I'm gonna capture that, cut that off. 
Now I'm gonna take my ultra wire and I'm going to wrap that over the body to really capture that flashaboo underneath of it so that it doesn't come unraveled, doesn't get cut by a fish's teeth. And also adds a little bit of flash, a little bit of extra weight, a little bit of, little bit of texture. I'll go ahead and helicopter that off so I don't have to cut it with my, my scissors and it's nice and even. And now for a thorax, I'm just gonna use this ice dub olive brown, take a little pinch of that. And I'm gonna dub that on my thread and I'm gonna wrap it onto the hook right where I ended my flashaboo. to build up just a little bit of a thorax, something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a couple whip finishes. Go ahead and put it in my bobbin cradle. And you can do, uh, I have a variety of different ways to finish your fly. Some people like to put just a few hackle fibers going out each side to act as legs. I personally like doing a soft hackle collar on my lightning bugs. Uh, for today's fly, I'm gonna be using just this small feather from a duck that I harvested this past winter, and I'm gonna tie it in and wrap it around the hook so that these hack or these uh, fibers are all pointing back, and you can tell they're a little bit uh, of a model color. You've got some white and some brown speckling in there, and that's just gonna help this fly to breathe a little bit under the water and add a little bit of movement. I'll, on this fly, I only want these brown fibers. I don't want any of this fluffy stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut my feather right where that fluffy stuff ends. I'm gonna cut that stem. Go ahead and I'm just gonna pluck a couple of these feathers that I missed, fibers that I missed. So now I have something like that and I have a little bit of an exposed hook stem. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shove that stem up underneath the bead so it's got some place to stay like that, and I'm just gonna capture that stem in with my tying thread. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple whip finishes in here, hold everything in place. And now I'm gonna take my hackle pliers, and I'm going to grab the top of my feather with these hackle pliers. I'm gonna rotate my vise, and I'm gonna wrap these fibers around the hook. Do a couple little wraps there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take my tying thread, capture the tip of that feather that I have in my pliers. Let go of the hackle pliers. And now we've got this nice little soft hackle here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab all these fibers, pull them back. And I'm gonna do a couple wraps over the base of those so they're all facing towards the back. Look something like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and throw in two series of whip finishes. From here, to add just a little bit of, of uh, flash to the fly, a little bit of body, and to cover up those thread wraps, I'm gonna take another little pinch of this dubbing and tie it in right behind the bead. So look something about like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do just another set of whip finishes. Hold that in place. Make sure bead seated correctly, pull tight. And then I'm just going to trim my tying thread. And that is the gold lightning bug with a soft hackle. Now again, the soft hackle is gonna add a little bit of movement, add a little bit of breathability when it's down there in the water and it's gonna be a really great trailer to fish behind a larger nymph. And again, this can imitate a variety of insects. It's very bright, really flashy. You'll even catch a few whitefish on this. Whitefish like these a little bit brighter, smaller flies. But it'll be a great pattern as we come here into the warmer months and it'll fish well into the fall. You can tie it a little bit smaller if you wanted to, but this size 14 is about as large as I would go. Really great pattern here on the Yakima River. Thank you guys for watching today's episode of the Fly Tying Series. 
We want to make sure that everybody's staying safe and healthy during this time. We're all stuck inside. It's a great time to tie flies and get ready for fishing when it opens back up here, hopefully in the near future. Make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified every time one of these episodes uploads. Also make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you very much for watching this episode and we'll see you on the next one.